and welcome to Dongguan in the south of China for the first of the semi-finals at the 2015 Vivo BWF Sudaman Cup, the World Mixed Team Championships. This is the 14th staging of the Sudaman Cup and after six days of competition, we are now down to the last four. This afternoon we have China, the defending champions against Indonesia, the first ever winners of this prestigious trophy. China are not only the defending champions, they've also won the Sudaman Cup an incredible nine times over the last ten competitions. Their campaign so far in Dongguan has been exemplary. They won their group without dropping a match and followed that up by breezing through the quarter-final where they beat Germany 3-love. Now, Indonesia are not only the first ever winners of the Sudaman Cup staged in Jakarta in 1989, they have also contested the final on a further six occasions. But you have to go back eight years to 2007 for the last time they reached the final. Indonesia topped their group by beating the number three seeds Denmark in the round robin stage. And as you can see in the quarterfinal yesterday, they defeated Chinese Taipei 3 1. The second of those semi finals will take place this evening. So, what a great semi finals day we've got here. China against Indonesia. Well, this lineup is the first choice lineup as determined by the international governing body, the BWF. We start with men's doubles and the Olympic champions against the former world champions. Then we have women's singles and Li Shuere, the Olympic women's singles champion against Manaputi. Then Chen Long, uh, the world champion and world number one up against uh, Jonathan Christie, a junior player who had a sensational win against Su Jen Hao in the quarterfinal yesterday. Then women's doubles and Tang Huan Ting and Yu Yang up against the Asian Games gold medalists, Maswari and Polly. And if we get that far down to the fifth match, the mixed doubles, the world and Olympic champions, Zhang Nang and Xiao Yun Lei up against the 2013 world champions, Tantoi Akmad and Liliana Natsia. So that really is a terrific lineup. Now, I said if we get that far, because of course, from the knockout stage of the Sudaman Cup, once one team has won three matches within the tie, any remaining matches are not contested. Well, I'm Jill Clark, delighted to say that once again I've got Steen Peterson sitting beside me, former head coach of the Denmark team. And Steen, you know, I, I looked through the list of the lineup there, it really is astonishing, littered with world number ones, Olympic champions, world champions, former world champions. It is an incredible matchup. Yeah, it's a fantastic day we've got in front of us here in uh, Dongguang. Really looking forward to, especially uh, the first match here, the men's doubles. Yes, well, the reigning Olympic champions, Tai Yun and Fu Haifang from China, up against the former Olympic champion, Hendra Setiawan, now with his new partner, Mohamed Hassan. They say new partner, they've been playing together for a couple of years. And of course, the Indonesians uh, won the world title. Uh, two years ago in Guangzhou, not that far away from where we are right now in Guangzhou. Well, no doubt where the support lies. The home fans have been noisy from the moment we arrived at the arena here. But as far as this Indonesian pair are concerned, they've played in all three previous matches for Indonesia and they won all three previous matches. As far as the Olympic champions are concerned, well, they were selected against Thailand and struggled in three games to win against Bodhinisara and uh, Pakawat uh, Vilalak. So, we weren't terribly impressed with their performance against Thailand, and we're slightly surprised that they've gone with this Chinese pair. Yeah, um, they had the choice of uh, playing Zhang Nan in, in two uh, categories, and obviously they've decided to do otherwise, and uh, well, let's see if they're right. Yes, well, of course, these two pairs, well, certainly three of the four players on court having been Olympic gold medalists and having played against each other 
numerous times. Well, we'll know each other's style very well indeed. There's Fu Haifang, the left-hander, the 31-year-old from Jiang in uh, this uh, province. They do not have a world ranking at the moment because they only played one event last year as a combination and they lost in the last 16 of the Asian Games. And the Asian Games do not count towards world ranking. Taiwan from Suzhou in Jiangsu province, 35 years of age now. And of course, the win-loss record does not show the match that they played earlier in the week against Thailand. And there you can see that one match, an hour and two minutes it took to win through 21-19 in the deciding game. It should be mentioned, of course, that Fu Haifang did play in the quarter-final against Germany, playing with Zhang Nang, and as you were pointing out, Zhang Nang playing two disciplines, or supposed to be playing two disciplines in that quarter-final, but we never got that far. There is Hendra Setiawan, the 30-year-old from the ancient city of Malang in East Java, two-time world champion with two different partners there. Currently number three in the world ranking, having spent 38 consecutive weeks as world number one. That was from November 2013 until August last year. The win-loss record for the year, two finals from four tournaments. And they won the Malaysian Super Series, uh, beaten in the final of the Asian Championships. Now that confirms what I was telling you a little earlier. Their two group matches, uh, this Indonesian pair was selected. They won both of those, although they did struggle against the Danes. That was a, a very good match, very entertaining a match. And in the quarter-final yesterday against Li Shenmu and Sai Chia Sin. Now, as you can see, this is the sixth meeting between these two pairs of the previous five. Not only did the Indonesians win the last one, in fact, they've won three consecutive, so they were love two down on the head-to-head, -head, and now three two up on the head-to-head, -head, the last time being in the semi-final of the World Championships, where the Indonesians went on to win a gold medal and considering that the Chinese pair have only played one tournament I think since then as a combination that's not a unsurprising but it was so long ago that they last met so the Indonesian coaching bench well the Indonesian coaches and uh, I don't know if that's a little nervous posture from uh, Richard Manaki Chinese coaching bench with Zhang Jun and Tian Lingyi. This, of course, is vital. We've looked at the team sheets, we've had a good old discussion. And we think this could be crucial to the outcome of the tie. Japan are on par for this. Mohammed Hassan. Bravo. Great. So the semi-final tie, China against Indonesia, gets underway with this men's doubles. <laughs> uh, nice clever placement of the smash from Dayun. may have missed on that occasion, Hendra Setia won, but I'm quite sure, Steen, that we will see Setia one trying to mix up the pace from the front of the court as much as possible. Yeah, definitely, and, and also trying to to win the net in the service situation to get the initiative for the Indonesian pair. Very, very strong in the service situation, the two Indonesians. So is Fu and Kai, but... Um, 
sorry, Fun Chai. Uh, just rate the Indonesians a little bit better in, uh, in that situation. They, they don't give any height away if they can avoid it on a look at that flat lift if it chooses to attack Chai Yun it will be a flat one which is more easy defendable uh, it's well taken we talked about it earlier in the week didn't we with Hendra Seti and Ryan I've talked about it on many occasions how on earth does he read the game so well yeah. Just seems to have this uncanny ability to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah, again, his interception, that's landed in. Well, they have perhaps the strongest tradition for men's doubles in the world in Indonesia. And he's probably had some good teachers. Thundered off the top of the tape from Mohamed Hassan. It was actually uh, lost, but uh, it was so hard that it jumped over. <laughs> That's incredible, isn't it? Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Chayun there, change the pace a little bit. So important to be the first side to sort of play a little softer. That can give you the initiative in the rally. Improving in that uh, move from his forehand side to his backhand, Mohamed Hassan. There it is. Normally, extremely dangerous in that position. Reminds me a lot of the, the former great Indonesian Tony Gunawan. Yeah.
lucky net call there from Chai Yun. Take so long in between rallies to play on. That's too short. Yeah. Seven, seven, ten, eight. Excellent shot from uh, Shahun. What's the call? Oh. Oh, we've got a challenge already. Well, Hawkeye will make the decision for us. Wow. Oh, I did catch that one. So, we're at the mid-game interval. A three-point advantage for the Indonesian pair. Well, they look quite relaxed at the mid-game interval, but I still have my doubts in my own mind, Steen, about this selection. Yeah. Um, we were a little bit puzzled um, when they played um, Thailand, and, and we got the explanation that uh, Zhang Nan was uh, was feeling ill. That's why he didn't play in any of the group matches. But um, I guess the Chinese team must feel quite confident here. They're the heavy favourites in, in the two singles matches, um, whereas. Uh, the Indonesians have only one match, in my opinion, where they're the favourites, and that's this one. Um, so, of course, a lot of pressure on, on the Indonesians, but... Um, yeah. Seem to manage okay. Oh, look at that. Before the match, I had this... Um, we thought that we, we, we saw the Indonesians were a little bit uh, rusty against the Danes in, in mm. their group stage match, but... Uh, Played excellently against uh, Chinese Taipei, even though the score was quite uh, close in the end. The match really wasn't uh, close. They were they were in comfortable leads all throughout both of the games. So uh, the only question mark is can they maintain the concentration level throughout the match? If they can, they have a big big chance of winning this match. Uh, a very good reply. Clever. Seem quite happy to keep Setia one to the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there is the man you've just been talking about, Jung Nan. That's typical for Setia, and he, he's not uh, going to work a lot from the backcourt. He's going to fire away a smash or two and then try something else and see if he can make his way to the net. Good defense. Brilliant, Brilliant defense. Well, all credit to Fu Hai Fun because we thought the other day, defensively, he wasn't looking that sharp, but that was magnificent. 
So they narrowed the gap to just one point. Oh, so they're short again. Oh, in. let's go in. Well, we don't have an instant review system on that front service line. No. We need today, challenge on that. But today we have a dedicated linesman on that line, and we haven't yeah. had that uh, earlier on in the tournament. At least not in the group stage. We might have had it in, in the quarterfinal stage, but then it's an oversight from, from my part. Five straight points to go into the lead, the Olympic champions. Oh, good change of serve. Yeah. And they're winning the service situation right now. Kuan Chai. Yeah. Of course, using all of their experience. Very nice. Buried so from uh, Fu Hai Funk. Set that point up. Okay. Yeah, that's a good return. I was quite surprised we had a quick glimpse there of young. Jonathan Christie is going to be playing the men's singles. Sitting here watching, yeah. wants to be involved. Yeah. But of course, the nervous oh. energy when you watch teammates. Probably just getting a feel of uh, the team match. It's gone long. Oh, the ebb and flow of this. I suspect he'll we'll see him leave after the conclusion of the first game. It's very normal for the players to just see the first game and then start their warm up. mistake from uh, Mohamed Hassan. heyday he wouldn't have missed many of those look how close they are to the front yeah. line first service line two points from this opening game oh, oh, oh no time for a uh, Service return at error. Four game point opportunities for Indonesia. And only one required. Oh my goodness me. Well, you sit right at the start of this, Steen, the serve return and third shot situation. And you said you thought the Indonesians were slightly better. I think that's been exemplified in the last three points. And, and it, how long did it take to go from 16 all to 21-16? Yeah. 45 seconds or so? Yeah. Because there were no rallies whatsoever. So 21 16 in 15 minutes. Indonesia the start as far as they are concerned. Very, very experienced coach. Yeah. Yeah. Been coaching a lot of the Indonesian great men's doubles, and uh, he's actually talking quite a long time here. Uh, normally, we'd be thinking that uh, we'd be discussing 
that they're, they're playing now on the, the side where there's a slight uh, drift uh, from the Indonesians towards the Chinese players, but uh, I don't think he is because they don't care about the win, uh, Asan and, and Sechuan. They are, in my opinion, the world's best uh, men's doubles in windy conditions because normally the problem with the wind is that when, you, when you're going to lift, that's really hard to control, but they don't lift. Yeah. They have yeah. no intention of lifting whatsoever. Yeah. Whereas uh, in, in conditions without a lot of drift, the Koreans with their strong, strong defense tend to prevail. But look at it here in the service situation, the pair who first gets it below the tape. Has a big, big chance of winning the rallies. Yeah. Both teams very strong in uh, in the flat game, quick racket movements. So very often the ones who plays a little bit of a soft shot has the advantage. Yeah, that's a good interception from Mohammed Hassan. I thought when they won the world title in Guangzhou, I thought Mohamed Hassan was the best player on court. I thought he was incredibly quick. Yeah. He is, he is very, very quick on his feet. You could say that... Um, oh, my goodness, him to see him. You could say that it's the same formula that uh, we've seen uh, China use with uh, Fu Haifeng and, and uh, Chai Yun, that Indonesia sort of um, utilized earlier on, pairing one of the experienced, strong old players with a young player with uh, fresh legs and a lot of potential. And of course, immediate success mm. by winning with the World Championships in 2013. Yeah. But th they tried this combination actually when, when uh, Fu and Chai were on the top of that game, played uh, against each other in 2009 in the Sudirman Cup, where this was a scratch pair for the Indonesians. But they, they did really well. Yeah, and they went to three games, didn't yes. they? In fact, that's the only time it has been to three games, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's your department, you know, that's all the results <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> I only, I only remember glimpses. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, Asan Sechewan split again and, and wasn't mm. paired until like after the Olympics in, in 12. And so it, it sounds quite possible that um, of the Olympic form that Fu and Chai should win one match and then the two Indonesians have won the other. Well, we were concerned coming into the event, weren't we, about the fitness of Mohamed Hassan, yeah. his back injury, he's had numerous problems and other injury problems as well. We just wanted to be held back on that a little bit. I, I still think that he's a little bit uh, away from 100%. Yeah. But... Uh, much, much stronger than we saw him in the match against the Danes. Mm. Probably also trying to uh, preserve himself a little bit there. That's in. Yeah, that's a great return. It's, it's a false shot from uh, Chai Yun, that's the problem, because that goes upwards and that gives a lot of opportunities to the Indonesians. Oh, well that got badly deflected by hitting the net cord. That's why Chai Yun missed his interception. Look at that, yeah. Big bounce off the net. Oh. 
Oh, so it's felt called. Struck above the way, says our service judge, Jakob Simberg of Denmark. You agree? I tend to agree. Yep. Oh, look at that defence. Oh, <laughs> good rally. He thought it moved, but he didn't. It just stayed covering the cross court shot. perhaps to look at what's different actually uh, with uh, with Fu Haifang and, and Chai Yun compared to when they won the Olympics in, in 2012 and I think there's two uh, major things to look for the first is that uh, Fu Haifang used to have this very very deadly smash steep and with uh, fast pace now it's a little bit more human so you can actually return it the advantage of him smashing is not as big as it used to be. Mm. And I also think that even though the racket movement of um, the two Chinese players is uh, just as quick as, as it used to be, I think Chai Yun is a, just a tiny little bit slower uh, on the front court than he used to be. And yeah, I agree. It's quite natural, but it mm. just makes a very big difference compared to uh, from 8 to, to 12, where they actually were the dominating pair in the world. Yeah. Four times world champions. And I think for your point about uh, perhaps this man has dropped his pace just slightly, I think he was so reliant yeah. for his domination on the front of the court on his sheer speed because he doesn't have the, the ability to read in the same way as uh, him, the Rossetti one, and therefore he was reliant on that speed to make all those interceptions. Yeah, and, 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 and he was capable of doing that and, and made almost no errors. And when, when he first got the shuttle, you, you couldn't get it away from him again. And if you got it away, Fu Haifang was ready with his killer smash. Yeah. <laughs> Rally. Oh my Oi. goodness. Yeah, well played. Well, initially. Terrific defense by the Olympic champions. Look at that last smash. That's yeah. what they're so good at, the Indonesians. Playing the body, playing the middle, and then suddenly burying their smash placement to the inner sidelines. so nice to get one of these rallies because that's actually what the audience love and mm. and we do too yeah no oh, he's mr cool isn't he in the Rossetti one <laughs> never looks <laughs> flustered oh, what was that mm. Well, the Indonesians to the mid-game interval with a two-point advantage, but you have to say, what on earth was Fu Haifeng doing? He yeah, played he a return of serve and backed off. Yeah. Return to the nets. If you do that, you stand your ground, surely. It never, it never comes there where he was <laughs> on his way. <laughs> Quite a bit of strapping on the legs there of uh, Fu Hefeng. 
Yeah, both knees. And, and that, that's the hard thing for the Chinese. If they lose concentration by just a tiny little bit, they'll get punished. Well, this is actually a run of five straight points because they were eight, nine down. Cho Yun wants the shuttle changed. Hoping that might bring a change of fortune. Look short, that service. <laughs> you know, during the mid game interval there, I thought that. Heriyemam was saying something about the defence. He said, from his gestures, he seemed yeah. to be saying something about driving it across court. How close it is. Oh, it bounced off the top of the tape. But that really is the problem for Fu and Chan right now that they lost these two or three easy points just after the interval. So now they have to play catch up. And the two Indonesians, they go for all the 50 50 chances. So. They're pretty satisfied just playing 50-50 for the rest of this game. Yeah. It's extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. How does he do totally that? Totally fantastic reaction. And he looks so casual and easy about it as well. But that's perhaps it. In order to be quick, you have to be relaxed. Yeah, good point. And also unbothered by the mistakes you make. There's a lot of players who notice whenever they make the mistakes, even though they make perhaps one mistake out of seven, mm. they still notice the mistakes. Mm. But you can't really do that. You have to look at all the points you score. Yeah. Good interception again. Starts from Sergio on. He's oh, got he it back. No, he hasn't. Well, you really feel it's now or never as far as the Olympic champions are concerned. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's just hard to see them winning seven points without uh, the Indonesians getting at least three. Uh, great placement of the smash, probably not the fastest smash in the world but he always thinks exactly where to place it his peripheral vision must be amazing well he is human after all yeah. but as he makes so many winners he shouldn't care as much about his mistakes no. the more winners you make the more mistakes you should be allowed to make as well yeah Yeah. 
really like that from Fu Hai Fang. Try to block it from the backcourt twice. A lot of pair. We see block it once, and then if the chance occurs again, they just smash away. that prediction a moment ago Steve yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> but, but I, I'm gonna win anyway because I wouldn't mind the third game here yeah exactly yeah and a flatter smash forcing the air up and there's three match point opportunities for the Indonesian pair And the 2013 world champions Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Setiawan have got Indonesia off to a flying start in this semi-final. That, in fact, is the first match in the whole of the Sudaman Cup campaign here in Dongguan uh, that China have conceded. Yep. The raised arms, the perfect start for Indonesia. 21 16, 21 17, the scoreline. Well, I make that just a little over 33 minutes. Well, perhaps all the doubt we had and the question marks about this selection well as far as China is concerned well, we'll be very disappointed with that but what a performance from Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Sadiawan well that of course means one love up in the semi-final tie for Indonesia Women's singles is next, then men's singles. Women's doubles and mixed doubles. The scheduled last match of the semi final tie. Seen as the entertainment for the fans in the arena. As you can see, down on the arena floor, it gives us an opportunity to think a little ahead. And as far as the singles are concerned, but you actually watched Jonathan Christie yeah. yesterday. Of course, that's in two matches' time. The women's singles is up next. He is a huge talent, but one has to assume that against the world number one, it's uh, a tall order. Yeah, I think it's uh, too much to expect that uh, a 17-year-old should be able to beat the world number one current uh, world champion um, in his own uh, nest, so to speak. Mm. Um, and I don't think it will happen. Uh, no. We learned yesterday that uh, Jonathan Christie had dreamt 
that uh, he was going to beat Chen Long in the Sudirman Cup in, in a three-game match. Uh, that would be fantastic for Indonesia. But um, I have to say that uh, I think uh, reality will creep in on him in, uh, in a match time. Mm. Uh, after the latest singles, then it's time to figure out that there's still a way to go in order yeah. to challenge the world champion. Well, if your theory is correct, it's good news for all us neutrals because it means we're going to have the probability of at least four matches within the tie then because yep. Indonesia have taken the first in the men's doubles as we've just witnessed. And if your theory about Chen Long just being too experienced for the 17-year-old Jonathan Christie, then you know, so at least going to be one one, Ex exactly. Yeah, and so uh, just to finish this men's doubles, uh, I actually think um, Fu and Chai they did quite well in the match, mm. just not good enough to challenge the Indonesians. But but having seen this match, I, um, I tend to like the, uh, the Chinese selection that uh, saved Jung Nan for the mix because he might have played here and lost. Because there's no guarantee. I, I think the Indonesians, they they, uh, they played really well. They, they looked good yesterday. There was some glimpses of um, concentration uh, drops, but um, we saw very few of them today. Yeah. Well, we await the women's singles players' arrival on center stage. The court officials make their way onto court. Girish Natu of India and Christoph Wolf of Germany. They are already on court awaiting the players. The Olympic champion, Li Shuerui. And uh, Bellatrix Manaputi of Indonesia. Well, if you ask me, that was a fairly nervous walk from the Olympic champion. Looked a little rushed and didn't look terribly relaxed. Did you sp spot uh, that? I was just thinking the same, Jill. Uh, yeah. I had my. We've been discussing this, and, and, and we're pretty right. sure that. Bellatrix Manaputi doesn't really stand a chance in this match. But as they walked in, I thought that looks nervous. Yeah. And Indonesia's one nil ahead. Mm. And we have to remember that since Li Xun Rui won the Olympic Championship in an all Chinese final, mm. she has lost I think three or four big finals that she's been in. Yeah. And she's lost them all. Yeah. Two World Championship final. All England. All England final. Asian Games. Yeah. But will Bellatrix have enough to challenge her? Well, we're about to find out because the 26-year-old from Jakarta, as you can see, 51 in the world ranking at the moment. And in fact, she's the fourth Indonesian women's singles player on the world ranking five tournaments this year promoted from the qualifying to reach the second round of the Singapore Super Series where she lost out to the eventual champion and as you can see she's played twice uh, so far not selected against England beat uh, Nina Kiesfeldt in two straight games and then lost to Tai Su Ying in yesterday's quarter final in fact, her opponent, the world number one, Li Shui Rei, 
has only played once. Her win loss record for the year. Three tournaments and two finals. So really sort of backs up your point, doesn't it? Malaysian Super Series and the Asian Championships. Ah, here we go. Now, not played against Karen Schnarzer again. Of course, because of the draw for the quarterfinal stage, we had a, a repeat match from the round robin group stage with China playing against Germany once again. Now, look away if you're an Indonesian fan. That is not good news for Manaputi. This is the eighth meeting between the two, and only once has she ever won even a game, let alone a match. Last time at the Asian Games in the quarterfinal, Manaputi, incidentally, at the Asian Games had a great Asian game. She was not only reached the quarterfinal, but she'd beaten PV Sindhu to reach that quarterfinal where she lost to her opponent of today. So I always think that Manaputi is one of those really talented individuals that because of injury troubles perhaps doesn't play enough tournaments to get her world ranking up to what it really should be. I think she's a better player than her world ranking suggests. Yes, I totally agree. I, I see her as a player who's really dangerous for most players to meet mm. in the first or second round in a tournament, in a Super Series tournament, Premier Series tournament. But she's she hasn't been able to get it all together to win two, three consecutive matches against strong players. The Olympic champion, Ali Shuerui, gets China, the defending champions, back on track. Along. Now, just to qualify why Li Shuerui didn't play in the quarter-final on Thursday against Karen Schnauzer and that is because it was scheduled as the fourth match on and China had already beaten Germany 3-love and as I was explaining earlier dead matches are not contested and that's why they didn't play and rightly so dead matches shouldn't be contested I think you'll agree with that Steen yeah, in the knockout stage, yeah. it would be very, very strange to play matches after the overall team tie is conclude concluded. Yeah, so it used to be the case. That's a brilliant net shot. I have one concern on, on behalf of uh, better tricks Manoputi, and that is that if he's going to win this match, I think it's going to be a long match. And yesterday we saw that she, from time to time, Ask permission to go out and, and dry up and, and actually also sort of uh, blow her nose and so on. So I would expect that she was uh, also suffering from a little cold or something like that. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm suspicious about her stamina. Will it be enough to mm. put pressure on the jury? Oh, that's all right. Yeah. If she is suffering a little cold, are you surprised by the selection? Linda Wenny Funny 3 is here. She's no. higher ranked, 36 in the world. Yeah, no? but, but I don't think Linda Wenny has, has shown this ability to sort of challenge the very strong players. But I might just be uh, not concentrating. Oh, ooh, ooh, oh. Ooh. oh, dear me. I didn't like that at all. No, she's in physical distress. That was, was that she, the uh, knee? It's her knee. It's her knee. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I'm not sure I can look at this. Oh. Ooh. No, 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 no. Oh, that's... That I, looks terrible. That looks terrible. This is tragedy. Yeah. Absolute tragedy. I've 
Knee bending yep. the wrong way. Anterior cruciate ligament. I know all about that. And it was it was strapped ahead of the match. Just as you get off to a no, really good start. Yeah, she can't continue. There's no way she can continue. Oh my goodness me. My heart bleeds for her. This is terrible. The start of the Olympic qualifying period on the big, big stage this year, the Sudermann Cup semi-final uh, cold spray. I'm sorry, it's not going to help in this situation. No, no, no. No. Oh, yeah. I know all these tests that the doctors do on the knees as well. I'm yeah. serious. I, I, I really don't think I can look. She wants to get some kind of extra taping on it. And the difficult part is that if she's really torn that ACL and tries to play on, it could go even worse. We've seen that a couple of years ago with the Russian player with the, well actually um, participated for Sweden, Marina Andreevskaya. Yeah. That was almost unbearable. Yeah. And I hated that the doctors didn't prevent her from going on court yeah. again. And you made the point earlier, Steen, that, you know, if she's not 100% fit with a bit of a cold and, and everything yeah. anyway, you have doubts about her abilities to win this match. Yeah. Now, if she's carrying an injury as well, surely this is madness. This is absolute madness. It's all about... Did she sort of manage to take the weight off that knee before it was yeah. really, really bad? I hope the coach there is that Bandang Suprianto. Yeah. I hope he uses common sense here and says. Well, she's got a. She's got a. Oh, she's going to try. Why not? Oh, oh dear me. Well. Well. Courage, unlimited. Sensibility, questionable. No, this is. Well, she redoes that. No. I honestly, Steen. I know in the heat of the moment. I know what I was like. I yeah, tried, you, you I, want I, to play. I tried to hop through the match. Yeah. yeah. When I did mine. Yeah. No, that was the second time. The first time it happened, I couldn't even stand up. But it might be she just saved it. Yeah. And get some wow. extra protection on right now. Let's hope that that is the case. She's a little bit uh, cautious here in the first one or two rallies. Yeah, and, and she's forgotten what the yeah, score is. She's so concerned about the injury. She doesn't even know which side to stand. To. No, Ooh, no, 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 stop, oh, stop. Oh, that's exactly what I feared. Oh. That's exactly the same. Well, exactly the same as happened to Marina Andreevskaya. They have got to, surely. They have got to see sense. Well, she can't play on anyway. No, she I think Bang Bang also uh, signals that it's over, unfortunately, for uh, Indonesia and for Bellatrix Manoputi. And she knows now that uh, this is a very, very serious injury. Of course, devastated. Yeah. Well, the deputy tournament yeah. referee, Ray. Yeah. Ian Ross has said to the umpire, enough is enough. Yeah. Yeah. And that is the problem, that you can actually walk. Yeah. The problem is when... She's in tears, no wonder. There's pressure on that leg. Excruciating pain. Oh, that's... It won't work. That's nice of Lee Shuere. She wants to help her yeah. off court. That is a delightful touch. But... Well... This she, she shouldn't be walking too much no, on that leg. No, they, they, they should have carried her off court. They should have got the stretcher yeah, or something. Yeah. This. Because also if she steps 
on something. Cable or anything. Yeah. There's a big chance of uh, worsening the injury. Well, it's one of the saddest things to see in sport, isn't it? Uh, an injury to an athlete. And I have to say that looks very nasty indeed. Something that uh, I personally don't need to see in uh, in replay. No, me neither. Well, on the uh, academic front, of course, that means that it's a one match apiece in this semi-final tie. But what a, a tragic, awful way for it to finish. Well, we have the situation, of course, now. Chen Long against Jonathan Christie. They probably won't have warmed up no, uh, sufficiently, so no. we might have uh, a little bit of a pause before the men's singles players get onto court. And of course, that gives us an opportunity as we know that we'll have to go down to at least the women's doubles. We will see at least that far. But Steen, we can perhaps talk about uh, one of the quarterfinals yesterday, Denmark about against Japan. Yeah. I, I choose that one because it was the best quarterfinal. 3-2, it all came down to the women's doubles, the fifth and final match. And I choose it because, of course, of your association with Denmark. Did you ever dream that it could be such a close match? Uh, the, the, the way the match unfolded, I had no idea that Denmark could be challenging in, in the last ladies double. They had a, a scratch pair that was actually only put together in order to uh, secure the uh, preferred order of play for Denmark. Denmark relied pretty much on the mixed doubles, the men's singles and the men's doubles. And uh, what happened was that uh, Denmark originally fielded Jano Jorgensen in the men's singles but um, but he fell ill and then they had to go for the uh, other option of Victor Axelsen but Victor had been ill since he played the first match uh, on last Sunday so he'd been ill for uh, like four or five days yeah and uh, made a terrific effort uh, at one time uh, during the match I think uh, in the interval in the third game he sort of um, uh, vomited in his own uh, towel oh, and uh, was totally goodness. out of energy so a victory for Kento Momota and, and uh, an easy win for Japan but um, yes it was the latest doubles turned out to be one of the most exciting matches of, uh, of this tournament yeah against the world number ones Matsutomo and Takahashi against the world number ones who, who did great to sort of hold off the Danish challenge because they really had everything to lose uh, can imagine being the world number one and, and in danger of, uh, of losing to a scratch pair and yeah. sort of uh, in, in some ways not really but in some ways deserting your, your teammates and uh, missing out on a, on a medal perhaps mm. the world championships uh, we, we will have to see because of course they'll play Korea in, in the semi-final later tonight so uh, very yes. exciting match absolutely and of course Korea's story in this Sudaman Cup campaign their first match against Malaysia on the first day of competition last Sunday losing 3-2 to the Malaysians had to battle their way through uh, against India but that's the beauty of this round robin yeah. first stage you get a second chance you get a second chance and, and, and the draw uh, in, in uh, some ways favored Korea because they were given a second chance against Malaysia and, and uh, if you lost to an opponent that you're the favorite against, you still lose it. What would you like more than to get the chance to get revenge? And yeah. uh, that's what happened for Korea. This time they beat Malaysia 3-1. Yeah. Um, and of course, the only match that Malaysia won was former world number one, Lee Chong-wei. Yeah. And 
I personally had them as a favorite in, in the mixed doubles to win the mixed. So, so yeah. if all matches had been played, perhaps 3-2, but again, we saw a, a very uh, exciting match um, in, in the men's doubles between um, Lyon De, Yo Yong Song of uh, Korea and um, Tamui Kyung and um, Govi Shem of, of Malaysia played an excellent match in, in their first encounter and, and another good match here. Even though I think it's a pity that um, we see matches between uh, teams that actually has already played at the group stage. I think it would be a good idea for, for the BWF to reconsider and, and make some changes to the draw so that um, so that you can't be drawn against uh, the same team that you've been playing in the group stage. We also saw China meet Germany uh, yeah. uh, again, and, and uh, I feel that that's uh, that's something that could be uh, altered and, and make the tournament even better because it is a great tournament that we're watching here in uh, in Dongguan. Yes, and we, we must remember that it's not just been about the 12 teams in the top division the Division One. We've had four divisions here. We've had 35 nations uh, competing. I had the pleasure of watching the Group 3 final last night, Vietnam against the Czech Republic. And, uh, and another thing that we discussed during that uh, Group final, you know, I, I think that it's such a thing for the players concerned, whether you're playing the uh, Group 2 final, the Group 3 final, or the Group 4 final. Uh, for you as a player, I know what it's like, and certainly our colleague, Ollie Leighton Davis, you know, we related to that because, you know, to, to play a group final at your your level of play, you know, not to ha even have a medal, uh, you know, of course the whole competition is about the Sudaman Cup, the magnificent trophy that it is. But do you not think we should perhaps try and make a little more of those group finals so yeah. that the players themselves have something to take away and say, this was 2015 Sudaman Cup competition and I came home with a medal because we won our group. Or, or a trophy uh, yeah. for the winners of, of uh, Division uh, 3. That would be really great. I also heard uh, another suggestion that, that the um, winner of these subgroups should be entitled to a spot in the higher uh, subgroup next time the event is staged. There could be di some discussions about that because as you probably know, uh, the, the, um, the groups are decided by the world team rankings and, and that would mean that we would have to uh, deviate from the world team ranking. But um, I think for one team in each division that could be done so that you really have a um, motivation to try and, and um, and win the groups and especially since the world team ranking is actually uh, made up of uh, the ranking in all five categories and you actually only need to be really really good in three categories to yeah. win a team match yeah yeah so uh, well all small suggestions to to make yeah. the event even better yeah well we used to have relegation and uh, Promotion. Yeah, and I think that it's a good thing that we've left that with mm. uh, only relegation and promotion because there can be a huge difference in, in team strength yeah. uh, in two years' time. Yeah, of course. Yeah, good point. Well, there's some public address going on. I should think the men's singles players probably need uh, a little more time. And, and just to... to take this about team ranking even further is that if you if you totally reshuffle all the doubles combinations mm. and they played like four or five tournaments they will be very very low on the world ranking yes even though it might be really really strong players let's say Korea totally revamps all the doubles combinations they will be really low Well, sort of in Cup here, we've just heard news that it's going to be 20 minutes before the players come on to court, which is some considerable time. I think Steve Peterson and myself, Jill Clark, I think we'll get one of our colleagues to make us a nice cup of tea and we will rejoin you 
when the players are ready to come back out. Don't go away because, of course, it is one match apiece in this semi-final. And as soon as the players are ready, we will be back with you.
So the Sudaman Cup semi-final tie between China and Indonesia resumes with the two men singles players making their way onto court. Remember it's one all in the semi-final tie. Indonesia having won the men's doubles and tragedy for Bellatrix 
uh, Manuputi injuring her knee at 5-2. She was leading in the opening game. And of course, because that women's single so quick, we've had to allow time for the men's singles players to get fully warmed up for this men's singles encounter because the last thing we need is another injury. So Klaus Schlieben of Austria is our umpire for this. Cornelia Schroeder of Germany, our service judge. Chen Long, the world number one against the 17-year-old Jonathan Christie, who last year was the world junior number one. Currently number five in the world junior rankings. And interestingly, the world number one in the boys' singles at the moment is another Indonesian, Firman Abdul Kolik. Now, given the fact that Kolik is number one in the junior rankings above with Jonathan Christie. Some of you may think that that's an odd selection, but when I tell you that Jonathan Christie in the quarterfinal yesterday had a sensational win, which I'll tell you more about in a minute, you'll understand the selection. World number one, 13 and 1, his year win loss record. That's two titles the All England Championships and the Malaysian Premier Super Series. Last 16 in Singapore. Lost to Hu Yun, who went on to reach the final. So just three tournaments for him. Now, he wasn't selected uh, against Germany in neither the group at round robin stage or in the quarter final on Thursday. But he was selected in the group against Thailand against Boonsak Bonsana, and that was very comfortable indeed. 14 and 8. So he will be well rested because of course Lin Dan was on duty for the quarter-final stage. 63 in the world rankings at the moment. Now his win-loss record for the year. A couple of quarter-finals, the Swiss Grand Prix gold and the Polish international. Three tournaments for him. But his quarter-final yesterday against Su Jin Hao of Chinese Taipei was a fabulous match. He won the opening game to 12, lost the second to 13, and he was 8-13 down in the third. He won nine straight points to go 17-13 up, and eventually, as you can see, won it 21-16 in an hour and six minutes. Now, our colleague Richard Hoffman was saying that he had been reading on one of the social media outlets that this man had dreamt that he was going to beat Chen Long in the Sudaman Cup. He's got his opportunity. Can dreams come true? Well, Steen and I talked about it a little earlier. Unlikely, but you never know in sport. Uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. Because... Um, Not a lot of weaknesses on the other side of the court with Chen Long. Of course, uh, physically quite a bit more mature. But impressive game yesterday from uh, Jonathan Christie, mainly because in the second game he had extreme trouble coping with the, the wind and but he learned throughout the third game and, and won it definite sign of nerves I assume Whoa. oh well maybe not you know winning smash like that straight down the line 
This, not surprisingly, is the first meeting between these two players. look a little subdued after seeing one of their players have such a catastrophic injury. Three. Oh. One. I got it totally wrong. Who looks the more nervous? Very unusual mistakes from uh, from Chen Long, but uh, yeah, still early. Now, well, was a cool look on the face of. Chen Long and he asks his opponent to change the shuttle. Surely he knows about the drift. I don't think it was the shuttle. Simply that the drift is making the shuttle fly a little faster. Going towards that far side of the court as we look down. Oh, that's good. Lift not full length and that's possibly because of the drift as well yeah we saw uh, yesterday um, that pretty much the solution on on this side here where you play with the drift is to keep the initiative in uh, the rally stay in balance and then mostly play the back court from your own front court. This is a bit easier controlling the length of your shot from the front court instead of having to do it on the clear. I think it was probably going to go wide anyway. Long. This is how he used to play. Very, very solid. And then waiting for an opportunity to launch his attack. Normally very hard to score against. Experience. 
Yeah, because th this chance is not really a chance. I mean, mm. he puts it so close to the line that if it hits the line, it's a winner. But there's a big, big risk that it's going to be wide and an easy point for uh, Chen Long. If it's not close to the line, Chen Long's got it covered. As long as he's playing with correct length, Chen Long, it's really hard for the opponents to score against him. Oh, good skill. Oh. Oh. Yeah, we'll just ask the coach, was I right to take it? And I think he was. Look, almost leaves it. He almost plays the perfect drop shot. Well, that would have been outrageous. rally oh. well he was being pushed and pulled to all four corners Chen Long under pressure sent in the wrong direction and then suddenly unleashes the winning smash from nowhere mistakes after such long rally for these younger inexperienced players takes some experience to know that you actually have to play or be willing to play these rallies every single time have to be able to work for it and be willing to play with patience what a great net shot yeah Oh, yeah, you don't get any better than that. Six, Yeah, clever shot. Not with a whole lot of pace, but the variation does the damage. Well, I'm surprised they're being allowed to tell down when we're potentially just one point away from the mid-game interval. I said that earlier in the week, didn't I? And then they played another four points before we got to the mid-game interval. Put me in my place. No, indeed, it is only one extra point until the mid-game interval. Five points, the advantage. No, just 
as much being said at the moment from Chen Long as coach Charles Ranzer. This is the thing, isn't it? Look at the, the power in the legs to recover. We always talk in badminton about the need to take the shuttle early, but also these great players have that recovery is so good. Yeah, and it's, it's not only the recovery, it's also uh, the quality of the recovery. And, and a lot of players, I feel, don't think about this. It's not just about getting the shuttle back. If you get it back, that's, that's fine. But, but how's your position after you get it back? So you need to practice so you get it back and sort of give yourself a little bit of a better chance to survive the next two or three shots as well. Yeah. And uh, Jonathan Christie lost the last 11 points, 9-2. So much for the nervousness of uh, Chen Long. Yeah. It's a good rally, isn't it? Look. That's it. Oh, it's gone long. Yeah, it was long. Looking a little disheartened now. Yeah. Jonathan Christie, he's sort of uh, woken up. Um, the thing is that he's actually, in my opinion, played quite a good game uh, that would more or less keep him in the match against uh, most of the other players in the Super Series circuit. Good shot. Yeah, good follow-up too. Then we have this variation in the attack. Instead of just firing away all the time, sometimes it's really helpful to be precise. Indonesia have got a good crop of young men's singles players at the moment, haven't they? They do. And I thought it was very, very interesting that the three youngsters that they brought here, men's singles players, to the Sudaman Cup. I don't think it had been in earlier plans because all three of them were entered into the New Zealand Grand Prix Gold event. And how nice to see another country coming into the Grand Prix Gold, one of the second tier of uh, tournaments just below the Super Series. And Indonesia withdrew all three players so that they could then focus on this Sudaman yeah. Cup. Yeah, and we've seen, uh, we haven't seen um, the player Isan in this tournament, but we saw Firman Kolik mm. against uh, Jano Jorgensen, and, and I feel also there that he played a, a good game. Yeah. He just wasn't as physical as Jano Jorgensen and as efficient. But, um, but if they can get a a number of players coming up together, challenging each other with different playing styles. I think we're going to hear a lot more of Indonesian men's singles um, in, in two or three years' time. Yeah. And I can see why Fierman probably could be ranked number one when he plays against players that are uh, less physical. Mm -hmm. um, because what a fantastic technique he had. And, uh, yeah. 
Jonathan, I feel, is a bit more efficient in his game. Oh, that's good. that is delightful. Yeah. yeah. And that's sort of what you're looking for as, um, as a coach sitting out on the chair, seeing is there any situations where we can sort of um, challenge the opponent, where we can score some points? And I feel that he's got a lot of variations from his um, long forehand. And that's not so common. Normally the players have more variation from the backhand side. You see, now that's another rally where Jonathan Christie was doing, uh, dictating the pace, yeah. really pushing his opponent around the court, and then he just doesn't have that trust in himself to uh, to continue his patience. No. And and then there's one, not a bad shot, just a little loose shot, mm. and it's punished immediately from from Chen Long. And yeah. So so in order to challenge Chen Long. You have to be able to do the same as he does. Sort of play long rallies without giving uh, a lot of attacking opportunities away to the opponent. And if there's attacking op opportunities, you have to be able to defend. So that's sort of the basic thing that you need to do. And then you have to have more um, weapons than Chen Long has got. And, and if you should criticize Chen Long a little bit, it might be that he has to work hard for his points. It's not like mm. these spectacular winners he fires away. Yes, when you compare him to Lin Dan, the Olympic champion, or Lee Chong Wei, or Peter Gaeta in recent years, and Taufik Hidiat, the former world and Olympic champion from Indonesia. That's a beautiful shot. They, all those players, I can see it in my mind right now, all had really good variation on winners. Yeah. Whereas Chen Long has a good powerful smash, he has one or two good angles, but he doesn't have that creativity in the same way. No, and, and that's probably why he needs to be patient. He needs mm. to have a really, really solid basic game. Yeah. And I remember at the... Uh, World Championship in uh, 2013, we tried this game of playing spot the low quality shot from uh, Chen Long. And we didn't s we didn't spot many, did we? No, and, and the viewers are welcome to try it again here because uh, <laughs> there aren't a whole lot of uh, low quality shots. Which is why he's got game point opportunities, ten of them. Opening game to the world number one, Chen Long of China. Error on the return of serve. Eighteen minutes that opening game. He's got lovely poise, hasn't he? Good balance, look at that. Goodness me. Shoulder strap back. Strapping as well. That's concerning for an athlete that's only 17 years of age.
So the world champion Chen Long, and he won the opening game 21 10. Well, from what we've seen so far this week, all the singles players prefer to play from that far side of the court, so it's a little ominous for Jonathan Christie. remember a couple of years ago during the Indonesian Open, Steen, uh, there was a retirement ceremony for Taufik Hidiat and there was a symbolic gesture from the former World Olympic champion of handing a racket to one of the up-and-coming junior players and the man he chose to give that racket to was Jonathan Christie, sort of symbolically sort of handing over the uh, the responsibility to uh, lead Indonesia in future. And from what I've seen this week, I think that's a, a distinct possibility. I know you've mentioned all three players, the young team players, but, you know, and certainly watching him in that opening game against Chen Long, I, I like the way he was taking the rally to his opponent as much as he could. Second time he's got a bit of success in uh, aiming for um, or just outside the left hip of um, Chen Long. Let's see if he did it on purpose and if he is going to try it even more here in the remainder of the second game. Going wide. Yeah. Oh. A lot of play to the short forehand of uh, Chen Long. In the last couple of rallies. Christie, he struggled so much in the second game playing this side closest to the camera, but in this third game he made his comeback from here down at 13. 13 8 it was. Oh. Yeah. thinking about a challenge and I think it was wide yeah good call line judge Another one down that line. It's just terrible to give these easy points away where you're actually in control of the rally mm. because uh, you know how hard it's going to be scoring the same points again against um, Chen Long. So his uh, 
style of play is in, in some way intimidating on the opponent. They feel they have to go for the lines, they have to go for the net court in order to score points, and by doing so, they actually <laughs> have a very, very big risk of playing themselves out of the game. Oh, he took it, it was going well wide. And uh, Shia Shans <laughs> on the coaching chair from the total opposite side of the court waves as uh, uh, you should have just left it. Yeah. Yeah, it was a sort of <laughs> gasp from the crowd, wasn't there? Yeah. And I agree with you, Joel. I think it would have gone wide. Mm. We've seen it all week that the side drift from left to right has taken shuttles out on the sideline and it's only the last 50 centimeters or so that they actually move from being in to out. Oh, Very quick. alert. Yeah, and when you take it that early at the net, you've got so many choices, haven't you? Looks as if initially I thought he was going to push it. Push it, yeah. yeah. And then played that lovely little net shot back. It's the old uh, advice from um, former world champion Zhao Jinhua. Always move forward with your racket. Um, Outstretched? Vertical. Uh, vertical. Okay. Racket hit vertical because then you threaten to push. Mm. And you can always change your mind. There was the try again. It's closed. He's playing well, Chen Long. Oh, look at that! Yeah. Brilliant! <laughs> yeah. Mm, a bit of trickery. Shot. Yeah. And I really love that cross on cross shot. If you're played, if you're played cross like here, played back cross. If you're playing cross, being played cross clear. Attack back cross. Very different, difficult um, movement to those kind of shots. Mm. And often the players that uh, plays these cross shots, they move very quickly to cover the straight shots. Six, seven. straight returns that is always oh, overdone it was a lovely drop shot from Chen Long. In fact, I think it hit the tape, but how on earth did Jonathan Christie? Look at that block. It's delightful. But look at that net shot, even better. Yeah, he was he was going for the kill, but then he decided that it was impossible and it was too late to sort of change his mind. No quality in that shot.
think if I were Jonathan Christie, I would I would try to attack uh, with with very quick attacks and not uh, prioritize speed in any way. I would simply prioritize being as quick as possible. And and uh, if you're quick and not use a lot of power, it's a little bit easier to be precise. And I feel that would be much more beneficial for him than than uh, opting for power in his uh, attacks. So when you talk about speed, you mean speed of movement rather yeah. than speed of shot. And launch of shot also. Very, very quick launch, not these long uh, swings or arm movements. Very, very short um, reaction motion. time, yeah. racket motion. Yeah. Point advantage. Well, he's going to have to do something spectacular if his dream is going to become reality. I think from, from that arm movement we saw the, the shot before, the long arm movement is something that Chen Long uses to judge what kind of shot is coming here. And uh, I won't say it's easy, but it's um, it's not so difficult for Chen Long. Okay, so if you have a shorter swing or, or yeah. motion of the racket, yeah. it's more that in itself creates more deception. That's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, the players use the the body position, the uh, the movement the arm makes, and actually also the sound mm. to to uh, judge what kind of shot is actually coming. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite a fun uh, thing to try and, and play with the earplugs in mm. because you're totally lost for uh, slices and so on. Good defense. Brilliant. Well, just raises his racket in apology for the net court. Oh, that was great skill. Look at that. Could that be a possibility? The net game. We saw Chin Long close out the forehand corner early on, but. You shouldn't be expecting at this level to just be able to play the net and, and just win the net rallies. You should have some additional shots that looks exactly like the net shots. We saw the push Chen Long was threatening with and making the spinning net shot. Is that something we can see from Jonathan Christie as well? Yeah, it's gone well long. There's a challenge. There's a challenge. It was called in. I think it was a correct call. Let's have a look. Ooh, no. I'm not so sure. No. Orkai to adjudicate for us.
Well, he was immediate with his challenge, was Jonathan Christie. He must have been awfully sure. And he was right. Yeah. He was right. Correction. What a great challenge. Yeah, these young players probably haven't played with the challenge system prior to no. this event. That would mean they should have been on uh, the TV court in a, in a Super Series. Exactly. Uh, not so likely. No. No, but that was a, a very good challenge indeed. from uh, Chen Long here. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Racket head shows speed and then suddenly stops. Mm. It's also one of the sort of uh, distinctions between the top players, super serious level players. They have deceptions on almost all their shots. They, they don't always use them. Sometimes it's better to go for the quick option, but uh, you should be able to disguise all your shots. Well, that was one of the rare poor shots from Chen Long. Have you been keeping count? No, I haven't, but I think it's two. Because yeah. we notice them whenever <laughs> they are there. Two in the second game. Christie is smashing from his backhand side and smashing straight. He's actually putting himself in trouble. He's not going in any better position. So I would opt for a softer smash and then be more ready for the next rally because anyway, Chen Long is just going to use his own speed against him. Good shot. Uh, well, he he's challenged, but he asked his coach whether he should challenge or not. I don't think that should have been allowed. Did you see that? Did I you didn't see? see it. Did you see him look round at his coach? Oof! This is why we need Hawkeye. But it's Chin Long who's who's challenged, right? Yeah, he yeah. he was called in. Yeah, and indeed him. it was. But he shouldn't be allowed to ask his coach and look for advice first. The challenge is supposed to be instantaneously. See when you move to that round the head position yeah. anyway to drag it wide so you, that's why you've got to have perfect balance to be able to control it straight down that line yeah. and even if he hits it straight down that's the one Chin Long is covering and very often we've seen him make a cross-court defensive shot so 
he might as well try to hit the body or even go cross the first time where he actually hit a winner was quite close to being out though Well, he's challenging. He is actually challenging. Yeah. I instinctively thought that was on the line. Oh, yes, it was, surely. No, we're not. Are you sure? Oh. Are we going to have a little disagreement here, Steve? Yeah, it's, it's one of the situations where it's quite hard for the uh, linesman to, uh, to judge it, but uh, this time they were right. The smashes coming from a little across, mm. very hard to precisely judge where is actually the contact between the shuttle and the floor, because they tend to slide out a little bit. Yeah. Deception at all. Yeah. No, no spin on the shuttle either. Yeah. No spin, no tumble. Obviously, swap is coming. It yeah, was that straight smash again yeah. from around the head. Yeah. change in the playing style of Chen Long where he took a little bit more initiative. Mm. going and trying yeah. to really play at a faster pace yeah. and it, it's not really his natural way as no. you were pointing out earlier so he had to sort of bend down to continue mm. pushing on that one yeah good variation that was that's missed it yeah. Yeah, what a difference when playing round the head, he did something different. Jonathan Christie, that is, yeah, good call cool line judge again. You know, a couple of rallies ago, Steen, and, and I make comment that his return of serve, Jonathan Christie, was no spin, no tumble, too obvious what was happening, and I, I suddenly thought to myself, it's so harsh, that's totally unfair, he's 17 <laughs> years <laughs> of age. You know, and here he is playing against the but world the number one and, and world champion. But having said that, this is senior level. Exactly. And you have to realise there's a huge difference between junior badminton and play at the senior level. In a junior tournament, he probably won the tournament now, but, but here yeah. he is at the semi final in, uh, in uh, Sudiman Cup. So uh, that's the level of um, play that he's going to get uh, evaluated by. Yeah. Play. Well, three points 
adrift at the moment, Jonathan Christie. and long. Yeah. Two points away from a second point on the board for China in this semi-final tie. Another big difference between the very best in the world and junior level. The courage to play the net. Net shot off a net shot. Played with disguise, taken early. And he's earned himself five match point opportunities. That will cost him dear. China prevail. 21-10, 21-15. Chen Long's victory over the 17-year-old Jonathan Christie. Well, he acquitted himself well, the youngster from Indonesia. But that is a solid performance by the world champion. Forty-eight minutes for his victory and a second point on the board for China. Their confirmation of the scoreline. Two straight games. Well, Jonathan Christie may have been beaten today, but as you were saying earlier, Steen, he is a player with all that talent that can go a long, long way. And I was thinking, yeah, he dreamt that he beat Chen Long in three games in Sudirman Cup, so maybe it's just in two years' time in Gold Coast that uh, this dream will come through. Yeah. So 2-1 the advantage for China in defence of the Suleiman Cup title. The women's doubles will be up next.
So there is confirmation what I was verbalising just a moment ago. China lead Indonesia 2-1 in the overall tie. Next up is the women's doubles. And if Indonesia can manage to win the women's doubles, and of course they do have the Asian Games gold medalists in Gracia Poli and Nidia Rashinda Maswari. But then it will go down to the mixed doubles. Wouldn't that be a thriller? The world and Olympic champions, Zhang Nang and Zhao Yun Lei, up against the former world champions, Tuntui Ahmad and Liliana Nasia. No. We talked about the men's doubles selection by China and whether we were surprised by that. I was certainly surprised by it. I'm also surprised by the women's doubles selection. And uh, Yang and Tang Chuanting. Yeah. Well, I actually looked a little bit on the uh, records, not as thorough as, as you do, Jill, but. Uh, I noticed that uh, Pao Yixin and Tang Jinhua, they actually got a 5 nil head-to-head -head against um, Polly and uh, Maraswari, but um, we haven't seen neither Pao Yixin nor uh, Tang Jinhua in, in this tournament. No, and, and I'm not surprised that the uh, Pao Yixin and Tang Jinhua <laughs> partnership is not really considered. What is puzzling me is why we haven't seen about Sin at all yeah. in this campaign whether uh, she has played an awful lot of badminton so far in 2015 uh, because she's started a new partnership in the women's doubles they've been trying to uh, get enough points by playing enough tournaments to get higher up the world ranking and perhaps she's a little jaded maybe she's got a cold we don't know maybe she's got a niggling injury problem and they feel that this pair can win anyway and what about Wang Xiaoli yeah Hasn't played either. She could play with both Yu Yang and um, Ma Jin. But yeah. I, I, I totally support the selection of uh, Tang Yuan Ting because I think she's um, she's the best women's doubles player right now. In the world? Or yeah, in, in the world. Wow, that's a statement. I'm certainly a fan of her style of play. I first took real notice of her in last year's All England because she reached the final playing with Ma Jin. Jin. And I thought that she was the best player on court in that wonderful final. Played fantastic All England as well this year, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, winning. Uh, and this is the player that I previously rated as um, the world's best ladies doubles player, Yu Yang. So, of course, it makes sense to put these two together in some way. Yes. How can they lose then? Yeah, well, they played one tournament together last year. That was the India Super Series, and they promptly won it. Yu Young and so they've Tang never lost Tonkin. a match. So they've never lost a match. Of course, they were selected on day one of the competition in the group stage against Germany. Beat Hertrick and Nikels in two straight games. They were supposed to play in Thursday's quarter-final as well against the same pair but of course we didn't get that far that was scheduled as the fifth match and with China three love up the remaining two matches didn't get played got a very powerful smash as Tang Huan Ting there she is the 20 year old from Nangning and that confirms what we've just been telling you never lost a match of course, the year win-loss record doesn't take into account matches earlier in this tournament. Yu Yang, 29 years of age from Liaoning province, Olympic champion with Du Jing in 2008. I wonder if she will be part of the plans for the Olympic campaign I understand that she's going to play her next tournament with Zhang Xianxin. And there is confirmation of what I've just been telling you. They weren't selected as a pair, but of course Tang Huan Ting was playing in that match against 
Thailand with margin. So Maswari, 26 years of age from Blitar in East Java. Seven in the world ranking, that's a career high. And their win-loss record for the year translates into five tournaments, three quarter-finals and two second round losses. Gracia Poli, born in Jakarta but brought up in Manado in the north of North Sulawesi. 27 years of age. And they played all the way through the campaign. Undefeated here in Dongguan. And of course, winning the Asian Games gold medal last year, this Indonesian pair beat Matsutomo and Takahashi in the final, semi-final, beat the world and Olympic champions Tian Ching and Zhao Yunlei. So that's perhaps another clue as to why we've got this Chinese selection in the women's doubles. Yeah, because uh, Zhao Yunlei is playing the mixed and we haven't seen Chiang Ching play in this tournament either, so... Uh, seems like the Chinese have made up their mind that this is the latest doubles that they're sticking with throughout the tournament. Christoph Oswald from Germany announces play to get underway and of course this is very simple Indonesia must win this women's doubles if they have aspirations well of course they have aspirations but if they want to give themselves any chance of reaching an eighth Sudaman Cup final first ever champions when the first tournament took place in 1989 service fault called We have this <laughs> ridiculous situation again where the player's asking what what the fault is, but it's clearly shown by gestures of uh, the service judge. Yeah, the service judge, Frekotx from the Netherlands. I don't think this latest doubles combination is as good as Bao Yixin and uh, Tang Yuanting. No, I don't. I think there's one thing missing. There's the, 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 the skilled front court player is actually missing, in my opinion. It might be that they don't need a front court player because they are so good uh, overall, Yu Yang and, uh, and Tang Yuanting. But at least that would be that would be a, a spot to try and sort of uh, exploit for the opponents. That it should be quite safe to uh, to play the the front court. No, service call, fault called now on Young. Okay. Oh, good defence from the Indonesians. Gracia Polly did awfully well to reach the one forward. Yeah. That one there. And then look at that cross court drive from Meswari. And this is where I feel uh, there's a chance at playing against the Chinese because Yu Yang, however good she is, she isn't as good uh, as a front court player as, um, for instance, Zhao Yunlei, um, Bao Yixin, Ma Jin. Yeah. So it's easier to play past her. Well, I think that's long. Yeah, well, there's a challenge here from the Indonesians. That's very difficult to see from that angle, but I can see from that angle that was long.
Ne? Well, I lose the challenge. Yeah, uh, or just just block it. Mm. Oh, it's actually a good. Hard to tell. Yeah, good defence from Tanky Hunting. In some ways, the Chinese women's doubles here remind me of um, of uh, Kim Dong Moon and Hatsa Kwan. Their men's doubles playing style. None of them were the natural front court player, but uh, they didn't need to because they were so strong from the back court and the defense. Yeah, well played. Mm. Well, So, you know, given what you've said so far, Steen, and when Yu Young first took up her partnership with Wang Xiao Li, you know, and of course Yu Young has, was the Olympic champion in 2008 and been world champion. And many people, and you've just said yourself, rated her as the best women's doubles player in the world. And I can remember with our friend and colleague Jim Laugerson having a discussion and saying, well, yeah, she is very solid in her play, but actually I think Wang Xiao Li is more creative. She, 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 is, she's, she was setting up the rally yes. time and time yes. again. So, so given that thought process and given what you've just said, I'm even more surprised that this pair is selected. Yeah. I, I think that... Tang Yuan Ting does need the creative player, especially going forward. Yeah. Um, totally agree that Yu Yang is not the dangerous player, but mm. she's the playmaker setting her partner up, making no mistakes at all, almost like uh, Ricky Subakia did with uh, Rexy Meineke. And yeah, well played by the Indonesians. I was in, in the beginning, I was thinking that they were about to make a, a terrible mistake directing all their shots at uh, Tang Yuan Ting, uh, having the, um, the uh, perception that she was the weak link in this double. And, and that would be a really big mistake the way I see it, because I think the key to this is to, to challenge Yu Yang. Yeah. Well, she got called a service fault earlier on, and I think that's just disturbed her rhythm. And we've seen her uh, sort of uh, bugged by these service fault mistakes earlier. Yeah, earlier in the week. Yeah. And they might win this anyway, uh, the Chinese pair, but we've seen them struggle in order to get the initiative in the rally. 
and that's what I mean, they don't have this creative front court player that can sort of make sure the Indonesians are lifting. <laughs> and of course you can just do like that. <laughs> well, she raises her racket in apology for her good fortune. But she doesn't mean it. <laughs> She's happy inside. Yeah. Yes, a point. Yeah, slight hesitation between the two Chinese players. And that's the other risk, you know, they're not a regular, they haven't been playing as a regular combination. No, no. So there, there will be these instances where there's the hesitation, who's going for which shot. And now here comes the interval and we see the Chinese coaches go in and totally direct what's going to happen and they win in two easy games and we look like uh, <laughs> like beginners up here but but that's the chance you you have to take sometimes mm. um. yes it's gonna flip Let's go. no 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 that's wide again uh, or long again sorry yeah well another challenge here no, I didn't agree with the last challenge with the Hawkeye decision. Oh, that's clearly long. Well, that's not even close. Not even close. Let's hope it's not an automatic reaction from the linesman. I think all the players knew it because they were already at the kit boxes. <laughs> the, the coaches were on the starting blocks to come onto court. In here, Indonesian coach. Olympic bronze medalist in Athens 2004 with Flandre Limpele. remember once uh, we played Indonesia in um, the Thomas Cup and they fielded uh, Tony Gunavan and Rexy Manaki in men's doubles together and, and we thought oh that's great because they don't have any really good background player but they didn't need one because we never got it past their front, front court <laughs> player <laughs> and the possibility here is that uh, Chang Yun Ting yeah. simply attacks so well that uh, Yu Yang will have no trouble in uh, intercepting at the net, or perhaps they change positions. Yeah, oh, look at that defense, that's great. But, but it's too easy for the Indonesians to sort of play counter-attack oh. here. Yu Yang is at the net and she's doing nothing. And, and they're sort of mm. outplaying themselves, the Chinese here. Yeah, and Yu Yang really isn't, in my opinion, any sort of a threat from the back of the court. She plays half smash or a drop shot, waiting for that opportunity you were talking about of it so, to so get forward. Yeah, so she would need a really strong front court player. Yeah. And, and, and uh, even though I think Chen Yun Ting is a great player, I don't think that's a speciality. No. And so that wasn't too bad, was it? Just block it. Well played. Three, oh, from nine all. To, to flick a bit higher so that I'd have time to get in the good defensive position myself. If I were Gracia Pauli. Mm, 
shake of the head. They feel they have a chance now, the Indonesians. Yeah. That's good read. swing Maswari when she's at the net so needs a bit more time than for instance Pauli if the Chinese can make defensive shots like this it's a good chance that there's gonna come some mistakes from her Fantastic player. Well played, you young. Best. Best spot to watch the game at the net. Perception. Emphasizing the point that we were making earlier, that hesitation when you're not a regular com combination, yeah. it's in between the two players and they both leave it for the other. And, and no one is sort of taking the responsibility of turning the defense around. Mm. And that's where we sort of miss this creative player. But uh, I'm pretty sure that Yu uh, Yang has been told in the interval to take more responsibility to move forward. It's just wide. Yeah. Uh, nice take at the net. That probably proves your thought process right there, Steen. That's a very loose shot from uh, Maheswari, but uh, she gets away with it. And uh, mm. we can just uh, try to imagine if she would have gotten away with that against Majin. Zhao Yunlei or Bao Yixin. Yeah. But at least Yu Yang was, was launching herself yeah. towards the net, yeah. trying to yeah, yeah. make that difference. And but of course, that, that, that's the, the sensible thing to do, this uh, sort of point out a net player whose responsibility it is to, to um, sort of get the attack. And I think also they might be able to rotate a little bit more in their attack, the Chinese players. Oh, that's clever. Yeah. Good defense! It's oh, flat. she's missed it! There is Ricky Savadja on the coach's bench. Yeah, no question, it was wide. 
and four straight points to ease to the four point advantage. Fantastic play yeah. by the Indonesians. Yeah, the attack on Yu Young again. Short. Dangerous situations now for the Indonesians because they've sort of set themselves up to win this game, but uh, can they finish it? Well, the court is going to need to be mopped of the perspiration there. This is where. Yang and uh, Tang Yantin are strong if they come moving forward from the middle of the court or from the back court, middle court towards the net. They're yeah. really, really strong there. And the first defensive shot, though, was yeah. from Tang, Tang Yuan Ting. Yeah. And then Yu Yang saw that pressure was being put on and she moved yeah. to the net position. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Chinese take four points in a row ra right now. Because this is where the Indonesians are going to feel the pressure. Great reactions on the defence, gets the lucky net cord. Phenomenal. And that incredible defence has given the Indonesians three game point opportunities. He needed the one. 21 17, the opening game. Well, we might get our wish yet and have this semi final tie go right down to the wire. Not so good for the teams, obviously, it goes down to the fifth, but for. Us watching, that's the ideal scenario. And I'm pretty sure that it was necessary for the Indonesians to win this first game. It would have been devastating for them to throw it after being in control for most of the game. Young has quite a short grip, doesn't she, even from yeah. the back of yeah. the court. Look how short it is at the net. I think 
the Indonesians in the first game, they controlled the drift really well. So I'm actually a little concerned uh, on their behalf here in the second game because there's going to be just a little more power to the smashes of uh, both Yang, but more importantly, Tang Yuan Ting. Will they be able to defend in the same way here in the second as they've done in the first? And uh, will we see Yu Yang continue to move forward and seconds. try to sort of challenge Poli at the net? Definitely, the Chinese need to make a comeback now. Yeah, they are under pressure. So one game to the good in this women's oh. doubles. Yeah. Well, for all her experience, you young, I've noticed in tournaments over the last six months or so, Steen, I've noticed that she does tend to get a little bit nervous now. Yeah, but it's also, I mean, there should be a huge difference in her own confidence because twice she and Yu Yang has been whitewashed by uh, Tang Yun Ting with different partners. And even yeah. though it's uh, compatriots, it hurts. Yeah. It hurts your self confidence. So uh, she's not necessarily going in as the uh, captain of this latest double. And she's being asked to do a job that she's not really that familiar with. But we often see it in sport, don't we? It's, it's not necessarily experience. It's, you know, as an athlete gets older, you, you realize that the number of chances you've got yeah. to win the big one are decreasing and therefore you put on extra pressure on yourself and you see it with golfers getting the yips yeah. on and their That's putts. perhaps even more important, uh, a saying that says uh, self-confidence is a very fragile thing. Yeah. Well, yet another service fault called. And you young, once again above the waist. Well played. And she has played the mixed doubles. Yu Yang and has got a world championship medal. Has she also got an Olympic? Yes, she won a bronze in yeah. Beijing in the mixed doubles with her hand in. Oh, good defense from Tan Guan Ting. Super. Yes, and of course, Yu Young has got a World Championship silver medal in the mixed doubles. That was in Paris in 2010. So, given her status and her success in mixed doubles I would have thought that she should in theory have had more confidence as a front court player but when you said a few moments ago that she doesn't compare to Xiao Yunlei, Ma Jin, Bao Yixin, I totally agree with you. Steady, but but not that exceptional no. reading. Doesn't hunt the shuttle in the same way. And it's about how many chances do you get as an opponent, and, and uh, it's so important whether you're clinical or you're a little bit uh, unsecure. Good coverage. Good coverage. Yeah. Much better. first game she was merely standing in the, the middle of the court whenever Tang Yun Ting was attacking. So important to have these agreements in place. Yeah. 
pushed it long. Brilliant. Good rally. Yeah, you liked that, didn't you, Stan? Yeah, coming in, moving forward. But uh, the first lift from the Indonesians are too short. Oh, mm, so there's Colin Cornwall again. And uh, they're having a tough time right now, especially you young. I agree. Yeah. I, I agree with the service judge. Well, I make that the third service fault called on you, Young. Oh, there's confusion again. And then the smash goes long. Take a look at the feet of uh, the Chinese players when they're attacking. A number of times they're not even touching the front of the two... Uh, service line on the back court and that is a clear sign that the, the Indonesians are playing too short I don't think they can be continuing down that line this was long enough this is way too short My goodness! <laughs> Fabulous!
she totally stopped Poli Miles Fire stepping in in front of her and she didn't know what to do and a great defense from young Sign that just trying to relax herself. <laughs> Not only power, but good placement, and that takes China to the mid game interval with a two-point advantage, look at that. But, that emphasised how short the lift was again. Yeah. Very defining moment uh, for the match, the next five, six rallies, up to 15. I feel the Chinese pair is uh, about to change the game around, but uh, will they succeed? 20 seconds. 20 seconds. It would be so important for them to create a gap of more than these two points they have right now. Slight confusion. Who was supposed to be serving? Yeah. That's a great serve. Short. Oh, goodness. Wow. That's an incredible defence, isn't it? That was lucky. Yeah. Poli was serving directly into the net, but uh, it was called a hit. since the mid-game in interval, but given the point you were making. Very, very important. These next few rallies after the mid-game interval. That's well played. Lovely play from... Great catch over the left shoulder.
Oh, that is a magnificent put away. Yeah, he was a desperately short. In fact, I think it might have even been a half court push, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. But the angle she created was fantastic. Pressurizing you young on her defense. And it's also difficult for her coming back from the net. Mm. Always the wrong position. And still feel the Chinese have the advantage. I think they've had much more success in their attack in, in this uh, on this side of the court. Needs to take a step forward, the two Indonesian girls here. Cannot afford to be too defensive. Back level. Oh, goodness, the Indonesians were both stuck the same side of the court. Total confusion which was exploited. I thought initially they'd got away with it. Takes responsibilities at the net, Yu Young. There she comes in. Drift. And perhaps yeah. it just shows how short the other lifts have been. Yeah. Because uh, Tang Yunting was pretty sure that was going to go long. of that smash. She's playing well, Holly. I think she's the better player of the two Indonesians. 
bit more creative. Whereas Maswari has got some uh, physicality, very, very strong in attack. But, uh, if I were the Chinese, I would place the majority of my shots to Maswari. Yeah, good return of serve. That was courageous. away from this second game. It's a fantastic match we're watching, Joe. Yeah. Excellent ladies doubles. Yeah, and look at the placement of this final smash from Gracia Poli. It's all the Tang Huan Ting. She was just in the rhythm of her backhand yeah, defence, yeah, wasn't yeah. she? Smash across the body, down the forehand side. It's great thinking. It is the formula for the Indonesians. They they got to get the attack survive in the defense in the long run Maswari trying to intercept at the net but missing it and now three game point opportunities for the Chinese pair the opportunities to level this women's doubles at one game apiece. Good return. Uh, then trying to be a little too cute. Gracia Poli, and it is indeed one game all. Complete symmetry in the scoreline. Both games won and lost to 17. 45 minutes into the match. There's women's doubles. And it's one game all. of the scoreline. Well, they may have won that second game, but job is not done yet by the Chinese pair. Yu Young, very much the commander. Oh, I like, I like that. Tang Yuan Ting is also adding her point of view. Lovely character. I've spoken to her on a couple of occasions. Speaks very good English. Thank you, Anting. So, okay, Steen, if you were courtside right now and had the opportunity to have spoken to the Indonesians, what would your advice have been? Uh, it would have been to uh, move Yang away from the net, starting with the service situation. I think the Chinese have sort of. Uh, cleared the situation on how to play and, and Tang Yun Ting is, is uh, the backcourt player whereas Yang must um, 
take the responsibility on the front court, and I want to get her away from there uh, and make her unsure of her uh, role again. See how quick how quick is she's coming forward. What a good open rally to this deciding game. Good call. Yeah. The difference uh, between the two sides, now the Indonesians are playing with the wind again, and that means that they can actually get their defense long enough, which they had trouble doing in the second game. But I think the Chinese have sorted out their attacking uh, confusion from the first game, and I think the only uh, possible way forward is to try to get the attack for the Indonesians. Um, I'm not sure they're good enough to do it. Right now, I think things are going Yu and Tang's way. Oh, that's good. That's very good. So, a matter of uh, getting the attack first or make sure that it's Yu Yang that is the backcourt player when uh, China has the attack. That, that should be the Indonesian game plan for this first part of the third game. Oh, she pushed it wide. Two, four. Oh, good, good backhand. What a rally. Oh, clever. Goodness, brilliant. Well, greeted by almost stunned silence from the fans here. Yeah, the pressure on the attacking play is definitely going towards Yu Young. And she's on the front court. Oh. Yeah, good to see the communication between the two Chinese players. Service fault called. Second fault called on Gracia Polly. It's true, she lifts yeah. the left arm. Just in the nick of time before hitting it. about it and so much for challenging her at the net <laughs> well, I'm still very torn 
as far as predicting this, the outcome of this is yeah, concerned. Yeah, me too. But I, I still feel that the Indonesians need some kind of a lead going into the second, second part. placement and her work rate turn Q and Ting it's incredible there's the drop shot and then towards the right hip of Masuari and we should remember still that uh, the Chinese pair has never lost a match. my neck out to you and say that uh, Yu Yang and uh, Tang Yanting is going to take this. I think they've adjusted their game. The Indonesians, they've played 100% from the beginning, but now I think the Chinese have adjusted. Yeah, and I think with interceptions like that, I mean, Tang Yuan Ting, she's been hitting winners from the back of the court. She's been setting her partner up and on that last rally. Now, how can you claim you're not ready? How on earth? Well, it is called as a let. And that's the way to answer. Beautiful serve to the left shoulder. Covering the easy return. Yeah. more I'm watching this, Steen, the more I'm absolutely agreeing with you this lady Tang Yuan Ting is the best player oh, in the world at the moment I think she's but Yu Yang has played a, an important role in this match yeah Surge, five straight points, and it's all since I said I was torn between trying to predict this. Steen, you're absolutely I right. I love it. Yeah. Seven. It's crucial for the Indonesians to get the attack now and. If they're in the mid-court, not really able to get the attack. They've So far, they've been playing the net, but now they have to lift it flat over Yu Yang because she's coming forward. Yeah, that yeah, one. That, that one, yes. And lift it so flat that Tang Yuan Ting cannot come in smashing. She would only... If you uh, hits it really hard, it would be flat so that they can counter attack. But that's real red by Yu Yang, that one. Yeah, and on a run of six straight points from five 
six down. Change ends with the advantage. Yeah, and the whole body language, they're losing confidence now. Especially Yu Yang, who did look a little bit unsure earlier on in the match now. The nodding agreement with the coaches, the relaxed body posture. Yeah. And yet, for the Indonesians, especially from the Suare, a little look of confusion. Three minutes shy of the hour mark. Six in the deciding game of this women's doubles. disciplined Poli and Maheswari because there's simply no high lifts from this side of the court because they won't be able to withstand the attack from the two Chinese players that's good Said Joe, she's more confident now. Yeah, even the high five was hit with purpose yeah. after the rally. First service line. And that's what you were talking about earlier. It's too flat, the flip serve needs to give it a bit more height. They simply have no time to themselves into a good position. Oh, that's a great move by Yu Yang. Moves so quickly to the front court there. And a great job by the Chinese coaches. Yeah. It's the advantage now to China. see the uh, service judge alert to this phenomenon. A lot of the players does it, starting out totally according to the rules and then actually in the service movement lifts the left arm. Well, it's all 
one-way traffic at the moment now. And it's all in favour of China. Look at the reaction after that rally. And they have to go for some 50-50 situations now. The Indonesians hope that everything goes their way. You just hit it there and then I've got the next one. <laughs> That's what she's saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, she may be only 20 years of age, thank you and Tink. She really has played so well. And the Indonesians want the shuttle changed. China say no, this is fine, we're winning with this one. We'll keep this one, thanks. Brilliant. Two points away. The great reactions on the crouch defence. Yeah, that's clearly in. Two points away from an 11th consecutive Sudaman Cup final. Oh, that's nice. Very, very nice. Good change of pace. Court will need to be mopped. stance of uh, Tang Yun-ting. A lot of players, tall players, could learn something from her. What, so that she's crouching down low? Exactly. It's so important to get the point of gravity low. Mm. You have much better balance. You can defend better in the sides. The, the hard thing is that if you get it too low, you will be a little bit too slow f moving forward to a drop shot. Desperation for Indonesia. They have. This is probably their very last chance to make a move to catch back up. Twelve nineteen. My goodness me. What a 
rally. No wonder they applaud because China, the defending champions, on the verge of yet another final in the Sudaman Cup. Seven match point opportunities. Opportunity. Yang and Tang Yuan Ting take China through to an 11th Suriman Cup final. 17 21, 21 17, 21 15 in the deciding game in a match lasting an hour and 10 minutes. Congratulated by head coach Lee Yongbo and all the team. Well, the Indonesians put up a brave fight. Well, she's won Sudaman Cup competitions before you, young, but that's what it means to get through to the final once again. So confirmation of the score, 17-21, 21-17, 21-15 in an hour and 10 minutes. Now, that means China 3-1 in the overall tie and therefore the fifth and final match will not be contested the mixed doubles there is confirmation the tragedy of Manaputi having to retire it looked like a very serious knee injury and certainly we hope that's not the case but it all started with the 2013 world champions Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Setiawan beating the reigning Olympic champions Dayun of Fu Hai Fun. Then Chen Long, uh, the world champion, uh, beating the former world junior number one player, Jonathan Christie. Then, as we saw, what a wonderful women's doubles. And Indonesia dared to dream after taking that first game. But the experience of Yu Young and Tang Kuan Ting. Tang Yuan Ting playing in her first Sudaman Cup campaign. Well, they were just too good. Remember, we will be back in almost, uh, well, at 7 o'clock local time. That's uh, 2 hours 20 minutes from now with the second of the semi-finals. Korea, the three-time champions against Japan. But from all of us here in Dongguang until that second semi-final, bye for now. <laughs>